everybody hi 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 i am so hyped for this video <laughs> anyway welcome back to my channel and if you're new thank you for tuning in my name is jazira this is my beauty lifestyle fashion and travel channel so today as you can see we're going to be doing a makeup look a full butterfly i'm calling it starting off with a clean canvas so my skincare uh, was already done at this point you know i've already done my moisturizing and blah 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 yada yada all that stuff i'm starting with the mac studio fix foundation my shade is nw45 i know it looks like it's lighter as i'm applying but i have found that this foundation oxidizes actually so yeah it should be matching my shade eventually by the time i'm done and then of course you blend 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 when i say blend i mean do it like your life depends on it okay and when I'm done with blending in my uh, foundation, I start on my eyebrows, of course I brush them out and literally just draw them in. Like, I just draw them. Anyway, <laughs> we can also always make a video on, you know, eyebrows, good eyebrow game. But this look I was trying to focus on, you know, that the eye bit, like I mean the eyeshadow, the butterfly. So I did not like give my eyebrows as much as I normally do, honestly speaking, but they did turn out okay anyway, I guess. So when I'm done drawing them, I use this silver like plate thing. I'm forgetting what exactly it's called. I did buy this on Amazon. Guys, if you do not have this, please do get it. It makes life easy. You can put your shadows on there. You can put your concealer so that you don't have to put this stuff on your hand when you're making up. Anyway, so I'm putting my uh, concealer from Fenty in the shade 370. I place it on there, just, you know, a tiny bit that I'm going to need for my eyes. And I normally start at the bottom. I don't know why. I'm just used to doing it that way. I start at the bottom. And you will notice when I do the top, I do not carry more product. If anything, I use what's already on the brush. Normally, um... At times I'll even use my foundation like to do the top part because you do not want like a harsh line there but that's about it and then I'm going in with my concealer still from Fenty Sem shade 370 uh, on just the places you know that we all you know, highlight I have the highlights of the face you know I'm just a little rough with it blend 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 blend, blend. Then we go in with a contour. So I'm going over this fast. It's just the look is about the eye, none, none of this stuff. Um, so the Fenty shade is Espresso. I'm using a blush that, uh, oh my God. And I'm using a brush that is angled. Please notice that. Uh, it is easy for me to use. Um, blend, 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 and blend, and blend. Oh my God, I'm so okay. <laughs> anyway. So then after that, I do my nose. My nose, you're going to notice, um, I try to hold the brush at an angle. Again, like, not an angle, like I press it in. I press the brush in just so that I can get, you know, like it to look, the, you know, the, 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 si the size of the side of my nose, something like that. There are brushes for this though. I just don't have that particular brush. Anybody, anybody? makes weird faces when they're making up like me like oh my god like what's with the faces <laughs> okay so then we're going in with the laura marcier i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly laura marcier <laughs> something like that uh it is a translucent setting powder in the shade honey I never leave this on though for long. I always like brush it away as you're gonna see because I just wanted to throw light onto my face and that's it, period. Like, I, d I do not want it to stay there long or else I'm gonna look like, you know, Kung Fu Panda's cousin and we don't want that. Then for my nose, I still use that, you know, that light translucent powder on it. And I use the side of this uh, sponge just to like dub, dub, dub. Um, because like that, that side of that sponge, it's a disposable sponge. It's, it's thinner. So 
okay so try to always leave a gap like when you're doing the bridge of the nose and the tip that gap lets your nose look like it's pointing upwards you know makes it pointy <laughs> And then this is the Laura Mercier's uh, translucent setting powder in the shade medium deep. This one is by far my favorite. You're going to notice I'll still use it all over my entire face because this something this powder does, you guys. Like I cannot even explain it. I was not exactly feeling the brush I was using, so I just went ahead and switched that out for something you know that I always use, and I got the effect I wanted. Oh, by the way, I do not worry about going over those parts where I had put the lighter powder because, for, because the other powder is kind of really light, those parts still remain light. Child, look, look. Just look at look at that finish. This this powder, guys, like, it's everything, everything. Okay, so we're getting to the good stuff. This is the Mac eyeshadow base in the shade Laying Glow, and I'm just gonna place this on my eyelids, you know, before I start the eyeshadow. I do currently still have the Honey translucent setting powder on my nose because. I do not contour that much like my contour game is still you know in the works and I found that this helps highlight my nose more like makes it look more slimmer by the time I'm done with my makeup so that's why it's still there and I'm putting the eyeshadow base both on the upper eyelid and the lower bit because we're going for the butterfly and we're going to put some eyeshadow down as well we want it to sit well so yeah we're looking kind of clowny but I promise okay trust the process okay okay, okay. <laughs> all right so mm -mm. i gotta say i'm still looking snatched even with this you know panda eyes anywho so this is inglot i did pick up these shades myself so i'm not going to lie and tell you names because i honestly do not know the names on the back of these but I'm starting with that lightish one. I always use this shade all over my entire eyelid. Whenever I'm doing whatever look, I do not know why. I feel like it's like putting a white base to start with. It's not really white, though. it's nude. But yeah, I always just put it everywhere. And once that is done, I go in with the real color. So I'm starting with the orange. I always use this light, it's like a very light orange. I use it like in my crease, like as a transition shade for whatever color I apply at the top and the bottom. So that's what I'm doing here. I do that on both eyes. Please excuse my mirror, guys. I know it's gonna keep coming in and out of frame. This is Juvia's place, the Zulu palette. I'm going to aim for the yellow. And I gotta say, honestly, I really did expect more pigment. It is my first time using the palette, but oh well. This is what I had on hand, and I looked at all my other palettes. Like, I have like four of these Juvia's place, and like nothing was picking up color. But yeah, we gotta work with what we have. So then I go back into my Inglot because I noticed these shades have more pigment. See? See what I mean? So I'm going in with that darker maroon for the corner kind of. And notice that I'm still going over the eye because my aim is to create the other wingy wingy thingy. So that, so that the butterfly has, you know, color that it's seated on because we don't want the butterfly to just be, you know, weird looking. deeper shade like the, the deeper one like I wanted to create you know dimension like make it a 3d butterfly I wanted it to be 
flying off my face. You get what I mean? He catch my drift. <laughs> so we put that at the corner of our eyes. I know it's not really blended right now, but it is like a back and forth kind of situation. Like you'll notice I'll still go back into the other colors, you know, the orange, the whatever. Like just when I see I'm losing a certain color, I just go back into it and bring it back. Like here, I pick up the orange, you know, and yeah. We just keep doing that, blending back and forth, back and forth. We play with the colors until we have like a seamless kind of situation going on. And then of course I do the bottom as well. So the bottom is kind of like, um, I start with the darker shade, right? Then I build around it. So I started with a dark, deep, deep purple, then I did the like maroonish thingy, then I did the yellow around it, wait, the orange, then the yellow. Honestly speaking, I, um, I did expect more pigment and I didn't achieve that pigment. However, there is a palette that I have my eyes set on right now and hopefully if I'm able to get that, I will be working better. I, I bought this palette because, you know, it come highly recommended, but probably maybe not for this look, at least not what I was, you know, aiming to get. You guys these colors are so pigmented like <laughs> this shimmer palette it is uh from makeup revolution so i'm trying to decide which one to go with i think i'm gonna go with a deeper one and i'll just put that over the corner right we're gonna start out working our way in normally that's how i do my shimmers like i always start you know with the deeper shade bringing it in and then uh, for the gold that would come in next somewhere around there look at that look just look, I mean, look at this. <sighs> Mashallah. Um, then I, I just kept making the colors lighter, right? So then when I got to the inner crease, I was like, mm, yellow, not so much. So I went for a lighter shade there, like a, a more silver side-ish kind of thing than gold. So now I have three shades, three shades. Okay, so basically now, therefore, uh, as I was doing second eye, I noticed that I could have used uh, a second shade somewhere, like starting between the dark one and the gold, I added another, a lighter shade of maroon there. Now we start to do the butterfly. I am going in with the NYX Epic Wear liner, and we're going to start with like drawing liner, like, you know, the same way you draw liner, and then I also do the top line, bring it all the way down. I want them to meet as you'll see sorry guys my hand like was literally obstructing um maybe I'll, I'll just have a better camera angle for my next you know for my next tutorial but yeah we'll even to learn So for this eye, I did move on to the lower bit, um, just to get like, you know, a generic layout of my butterfly before I went to the inner detail. Also, like the angle at which you hold the, the liner is pretty important. Like this eye gave me a hard time down compared to the other eye because like I was slanting the, the, the the pen it would have been easier if I had held it um, perpendicular to my face. Does that even make sense? Yeah. But otherwise, now I'm doing like a web kind of situation, like pretty much like just do triangles, you know. And I'm trying to thicken it because, as you noticed at the beginning, we want to put dots, so you want it to be thick. And now moving on to the other eye. 
doing the same thing creating just a webbed look making the veins of the butterfly effect thicker just so that you know we have enough room and I'm doing the lower bit so making it thicker that's the beauty of this thing the fact that you need thick edges you don't even have to be somebody whose hands are not shaky or somebody who's perfect with their lines because you get to make it thick that means you can rectify whatever mistakes are underlying you know And this is where I do my liner. Notice I close my eyes and just wipe once. And same for the other eye. Please don't be the person that goes back and forth and back and forth. It, it just, no, no. Now I'm trying to highlight the butterfly a bit with just a little bit of yellow, you know, just to give it like, cause it, uh, cause I wanted of course it to be outside the borders, you know, the color and um, it was intended. However, like I mentioned, man, this, this pigment was lacking, but you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. I'm holding up my MAC. Um, it's like a skin finish, you know, extra dimension skin finish. The shade is glow with it. This is what I always use to highlight the nose, uh, my nose, the bridge, the tip, my lip, and the arc of my eyebrows. That's what I always use. And interestingly, I used my eyeshadow blush. I've never used blush actually, but yo, I am glad I did. Like, it actually came out, you know, really well. Then I went in with the same skin finish glow with it highlighter just for my cheekbones. This is the Juvia's Place Highlighter. You guys, you guys, hey, <laughs> the pigment in this thing, like, oh my god, in the shade Nefertiti. I'm going in with a lip color. The first one is MAC High Drama. I actually learned this one from my niece so many years ago, and it has been a staple since. Um, but this time I was just using it to line my lips and then I went in next with MAC topped with brandy I believe and after I go in with uh, Lady Be Good Yes, honey, that is Lady Be Good. Do not be shy about using your hands guys. It's, it's your face It's your face. Okay, and your hands are cleaned. I'm assuming you sanitized before you started doing your makeup I shrugged simply because this is the third time I was doing this take, like my light kept giving out. Anyway, we're going into the dots. You want to do your dots when the black ink uh, has, has dried. You don't want it to you know, mix up, otherwise you'll create like a mess. So yeah, I'm still using Epic Wear, but in a white shade, uh, still from NYX. Various looks that I got this from, they did not exactly do the inner, um, the inner lines. And this is uh, a blush from MAC as well. I know a lot of MAC. This is the shade Cheeky Beats. It's like glowy, right? It's almost like a highlighter, but a, a blush. Guys, it's, it's amazing. Heaven. This is how we're looking before we put any gloss. The look is a little matte. So next we got uh, lashes. This is a fashion icon. <laughs> you guys. My lash just wanted to embarrass me. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so I did this off camera. Then I, of course, used mascara for the lower lash line. I love this blush, by the way. Pretty much done at this point. All we are left with is the gloss. We're going in with the MAC lip glass. When I say it's glass, you guys. Your lips turn to glass. They reflect everything. It's like you dipped your lips in oil. Yo, look at the elasticity. <laughs> anyway, this is pretty uh, a pretty good gloss. The reason I have it in clear is it means I can always apply it over any shade that I'm wearing. And boom. We're done. Alrighty, thank 
you for sticking around till the end of my video i really do appreciate it and the support do not forget to like comment and subscribe by the way do let me know down below if you're you would be interested in a video about my skincare and stuff like that because my skin hasn't always been like this and an eyebrow tutorial and a liner actually i'm pretty good at liner for some weird reason mashallah i am so please let me know if you want me to share some tips i'll be happy to otherwise thank you guys so much for the support i'm ever so grateful and i'm just gonna keep you know doing what i'm doing and hopefully we're gonna get there have yourself a lovely beautiful weekend